Another right is the freedom of religion. Do anybody know what freedom of religion means? Uh -huh. Yes, sir. What's freedom of religion? You get, who gets to decide what religion you have? Uh -huh, your parents are, but, but, but who doesn't get to decide what religion you have? The government, right? Right, the government. In, our con in some countries, the government says, this is what everybody has to believe. Okay? Everybody has to follow this religion. And, but that's not our, in our country, everybody gets to decide what religion they want to follow. Now, this affected me when I was a kid in the fifth grade. That's, let me stand up and do this. Excuse my knee. So here's what happened to me. When I was in the fifth grade, I was, my religion was Catholic. And there weren't very many Catholics in Because I was really embarrassed. And I remember every day when it was Thursday, I would wake up with a stomach ache. You know, when you're scared about something that's going to happen to school, you wake up, you have a stomach ache, you don't feel good. I was that way every Thursday. And I would watch the clock getting closer and closer to 10 o'clock. Because at 10 o'clock, the Bible teacher would come. And she would come into the room, and everybody else loved having her there because she brought cookies and Kool-Aid and coloring books, the color pictures of, of Jesus, and it was good. everybody liked it. But then our regular teacher would say, Walter and Victor should now leave the room. And I sat in the far back corner, and I would have to walk out, to, out, out the door like this, and everybody would look at me like, what's wrong with him? Right? And boy, I was so embarrassed about that. Now, there's no good reason why I was embarrassed. It was fine to be a Catholic. I should have felt okay about it, you know? This is not my religion. I'm going to leave. Right? But I didn't because, you know, when you're, when you're your age, or in the third or fourth or fifth or sixth grade, you often feel bad if you're different, right? Uh, you don't want to be different from the other kids. And there was something different about the two kids that had to leave the room. So. I left the room, and the other kid and me had to go, the other kid and I, I shouldn't be teaching you that. <laughs> the other kid and I had to go to the library and shelf books during the hour that the Bible teacher was there. And they often gave us more books than we could, I didn't mind shelving books, you know, but they gave us more books than we could really shelve, and we had to come back after school and finish shelving the books. So I felt really bad about that. But so then I was in when I was in high school, when I was in college, I heard that the Supreme Court had made a ruling about religion in school. And that one of the and, and here's the one of the states had said every class in our state has to say the following prayer every day. And these people in the government had written the prayer. And they made every class recite this prayer every day in every school. And the Supreme Court, I read in the newspaper, said, that's wrong. People get to decide, every individual gets to decide what she wants to pray or what he wants to pray. Everybody gets to decide that for himself. There's some things that government should not decide for other people. And they shouldn't be telling people what religion that should be. Which meant that I was right all along, and they shouldn't have had this teacher come to my school where I had to leave the room. Um, but you know, um, when I think back on how I felt about leaving the room, I actually think uh, it was good for me in some ways. And because most of the people in my school were like me. And I didn't know what it was like to be someone who was different. But when I left the room every week like that, it made me understand how people feel when they're different. It made me want to help people 
that are different from other people because I understood that you know how it can make you feel if you know if you're, if you're different. So like there was um, so that was an important case. I'll tell you another one. There was a time when we were fighting World War II. Most everybody's heard of World War II, right? So we was a great war and we were fighting it and we were trying to save Europe from the Nazis and all that is great. But but during that time, some people got all excited at home and wanted to re to make everybody salute the flag every day. Now I'm all for saluting the flag. But there were some people whose religion did not allow them to salute the flag. Little kids who's, who's, who had a particular religion and their religion said, don't salute anything like other than a symbol of God. So they were not allowed to salute the flag in their religion. And the school wouldn't let them come to school. They were expelled from school because their religion wouldn't let them salute the flag. And uh, they brought their case to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court said, no, that's not right. You can't, you can't expel kids from school. You can't send them home because their religious belief doesn't allow them to salute the flag. So that was an important, uh, that was an important case too. Now, where are we? Any questions? I have one word. Some of these books are pretty good about writing the Constitution. There's one called The Bill of Rights, which is in your library. So we can go through the fact that the Bill of Rights was added to say, here are things government cannot tell people to do. So we talked about one of those. We talked about the First Amendment, right? The First Amendment protects freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of the press. What's freedom of the press? Do you want to know freedom of the press here? Freedom of no, not that. The press is something else. Do you know what the press is? You know, the, we, the press is a word we don't use much anymore. It really means like newspapers and other ways that we get the news. So that when you back in a time when you had really mean governments, if someone would write a story in the newspaper saying that the government had done something wrong, they'd go in and shut down the newspaper. The government would go so people couldn't know that the government officials, government people were doing things wrong. Yes, sir. How many people use the, use the word? I don't know. I don't know. How many people use the word? Yes, definitely. Yes. What's the Use the word press. Oh, use the word press. Oh, I see. Uh, uh, everybody used it back then. You know, the words people use change over time. So back when they wrote it, they spoke of freedom of the press. What they really meant was, if you want to start a newspaper, the police, and you want to criticize the police, you want to say the police are doing something wrong, they don't get to come in and shut down your newspaper. Now, the Second Amendment, we can skip over quickly. <laughs> the Second Amendment means that people have some right to have a gun or a weapon, but uh, how much that, uh, how much right that gives you is a very complicated <laughs> question. There's a Third Amendment that's really interesting that says that the government can't make you keep soldiers in your house. It used to be that they didn't have places to keep the soldiers. They would make people keep them in their houses. And the Third Amendment says you can't, you can't do that. Ah, the Fourth Amendment. The Fourth Amendment says that you have a, some right to keep information private. That the government can't just come in, into your house and search around and see if they can find if you've done anything wrong. That's the Fourth Amendment. The Fifth Amendment says that um, if you're arrested for doing something wrong, you get a fair trial. Right? You get a right to say, I didn't do anything wrong, and you get a right to try to convince the judge that you didn't do anything wrong. And the police get to convince, try to convince the judge that you did something wrong. Yes, ma'am. But what if you have like, a gun in your under your bed, but for a reason, like to protect your family if any people come in. 
Well, you know, actually, uh, the Supreme Court has said you have a right to have a gun under your bed to protect you from people coming. Like three swords under his bed. What's that? Sorry? My dad has three swords under his bed. I, uh, one sword is all I can use at a time. I'm not very good. Yes, we can use this. Uh-huh. Right. Now, somebody who's a police officer is like, this young lady's mother is a police officer, and, and, and they have a special right to carry guns to help protect the, uh, the rest of us. Um, the, um, if you're arrested, the Sixth Amendment gives you a right to go ahead and get a speedy trial. They can't just put you in jail forever and ever. You get to have your trial to show that you're innocent. And the, that amendment also says you get, a, you get a jury. Does anybody know what a jury is? That's one of the important rights. What's a jury? A jury is where you go and do something bad. Right. The jury decides. That's very good. That's a really good answer. Somebody, if, if you're a if, you, if people say you did something wrong, right? Did you, let's say, they say you beat somebody up. And you say you did. They say you did. Somebody's got to decide who's telling the truth, right? One of the things is, let's have a jury. A jury is people like us. So they would have 12 people that, that, that aren't the police, that aren't the government. 12 people get to decide whether you did something right or wrong. Yes, sir. They have witnesses, too? Yes, and you get to, they can, if, they're, if they're people that, that saw whether you beat somebody up or not, they can come and call and be witnesses. And if you're the person that they've arrested, that the police have taken away, you have a right to, to have people come and be witnesses in your favor. Now, all those are rights that we wouldn't have if we didn't have a... Um, if we didn't have a constitution. Um, because the constitution is the set of rules that, you know, that we agree in advance that we're going to follow. And you can have rules for a classroom. I know when you go to the library, the rules you have to follow in the library, right? Yeah. The constitution is like a great big set of rules for the whole country about how we, how we, um, the rules that we all, that we all live by, uh, and it's very important to have those rules in advance. So if we really get mad at somebody, there are rules about how we treat them and what we do for them. Now, um, anybody else? I'm out of I'm out of ammunition here. Speaking of the Second Amendment, um, does anybody have any suggestions about uh, any questions or topics that? Uh, I might want to address. Uh, yes, sir. That's a very good question. Can you only keep a weapon under your bed or could you keep it in a closet? I think now uh, in Washington, you get to keep your weapon anywhere you want to uh, as long as it's at home. And one of, the, one of the rules that hasn't been decided yet is do you have a right to take your gun with you if you go to the movie? Uh, right now, the answer is no. Uh, and uh, I hope they'll keep being the answer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you want to know Well, here's a quick fact Washington Monument is fifty miles long. Well, that's true. Yes, sir. Well, it's a Washington Monument. Yes, sir. 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 Y
the fact that you get to have some weapon, like a sword or a gun, doesn't mean that you get to have a tank, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? That'd be funny. I want to have a tank. Right? I'd like to have a tank. is meant to be rules that we keep forever. So it's very hard to change, very hard to change the Constitution for to get new rights. And it takes, uh, like most of the people in Congress have to agree that this would be a good change. Like uh, two-thirds of the Senate and two-thirds of the House, those are the two parts of Congress, they have to agree. And then three-fourths of the states of the 50 states, like 35, whatever, three, four, six, 35 or more, 36, 38 states have to agree. So it's really hard. That's how you, ch you change the written constitution. That takes years and it's very hard. We've done some important things. For example, one of the most important changes we made in the rules of the constitution was called the 19th Amendment. And I'll bet you nobody here knows what the 19th Amendment was, but it's really important. The 19th Amendment is really important to about half of you. The 19th Amendment says that women can vote. And before the 19th Amendment, uh, and it was adopted about, well, 90 years ago, right? A lot of states said only men can vote. Only men can vote. So it was really hard, and the Constitution was changed in 1920, an amendment that says you cannot, you cannot say women can't vote in this country. Uh, now, if you want a, to get a ruling to the Supreme Court, you have to first bring a lawsuit. People all over the country go before judges, and a very few of those cases the, the U.S. Supreme Court will hear, the most important ones. And someday, like when you're in middle school, you should go watch people argue before the Supreme Court, uh, it's a, which is a scary thing to do. Yes, uh, yes sir. Uh-huh. Can you keep bombs? No, you can't keep bombs because, you know, the right to have weapons means that, it would, and, and you know, see, that's a rule that we've adopted. That's one of these things where some people would say, I'd like the right to have a bomb in my home. But everybody else says, that's too dangerous for the rest of it. You can blow up the whole block. You can blow up the whole block. So you can make some rules. That's why it, it, it's not... It, it, we don't say that everybody can do whatever they want. Right? Because some people would say, well, what I want to do is have a block. So you've got to have some rights of all of us to tell people some things you can't do. On the other hand, wearing a black arm back, you can do that. Now, yes, ma'am. Would there be a, could it, there be a member that said the women can't vote? No. Would there any more changes? Oh, there any more changes after that? Yes. Um, in some states, people uh, were denied, were not let to vote because of their color, of their skin. And we had an amendment that said that's wrong. Uh, the, the, the 15th Amendment said that no one can be denied the right to vote because, they, you know, because the, the, the people running the government don't like their color. Oh, and then there was an important one. It used to be in this country you had to be 21 years old to vote. Okay, you could only vote when you were 21. And old, right, you had to be at least 21. And, and, and you know when that became one, and, and people began to say that's not fair during the Vietnam War. And you know why? because a lot of kids who were 18 and 19 and 20 were fighting in the war, but they didn't even get to vote 
on whether we should be in a war or not. So people said, look, if you're old enough to fight, if you're old enough to be a soldier, you're old enough to vote. So we went through this whole hard process of changing the Constitution to add a new amendment that said that everybody has to let people vote if they're, if they're 18 years old or older. So how long would that be for you all? How many years? Eight. Eight years? Eight, so in eight years you can vote. So that's why it's important, that's why it's important to start learning these things, right? So about the teachers. Let's see. This gentleman has a question. Yes, sir. Oh, how is it possible? You know, I could not hear Kevin's question. Kevin asked a very good question. Kevin says, how much does it cost to get out of jail? Well, there are two times you might have to pay money. One is that when they put you in jail, but you haven't had your trial yet. The trial is where every, the, the, the judge or the jury decides whether you're guilty or innocent, right? But uh, So you can say, look, Nobody's even decided yet that I, that I did this crime. So I want to go home. I don't want to stay in jail until my trial. I want to go home now. They can put up something called bail, which is they say, okay, well, if you will give us $5,000 right away, we'll let you go home, but you don't get your $5,000 back unless you show up for your trial. So then you show up for your trial. And when you're tried, if they find that you're guilty and you did it, something bad, like you robbed a store or you stole somebody's pocketbook or whatever, they can either send you to jail or they may say, we're not going to send you to jail, but we're going to make you pay money, called a fine. So they can make you pay a fine, and that could be a, 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 a little, a small amount, or it can be a large amount, depending on how bad what you, what you did was. Yes, ma'am. What's that? Yes, they still do that today. They still have. Uh, they still have that. I think you have not asked a question. Um, when we're talking to Nana, when he said, "Do you have a bomb? Can you have a smoke bomb?" A smoke bomb? Can you have a smoke? Oh, wait. I mean, let me see. <laughs> I'm going to look up smoke bomb. And, 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 no, there's nothing in here. There's nothing in here about smoke bombs. So I think they could say, "No, you don't. You don't have to have." You don't have to have a smoke bomb. Yes. Oh, can a what? A bazooka. No, you can't have a bazooka. I have a bazooka. I I, you know what? I think your favorite amendment, I think the amendment you all like best is the Second Amendment. That's the, that's the one you really care about. Yes, ma'am. Well, I think the third graders have been studying Martin Luther King. Can you do, you know, a cookie of civil rights or Brown versus Board of Education? Right, that would be great. So y'all studied Martin Luther King, right? And Gandhi. And Gandhi too. Well, Martin Luther King really had a big impact on the Constitution. Uh, some people have even said that he fundamentally changed. He's responsible for fundamentally changing the Constitution. And he went to jail sometimes for what he believed in, right? You, you remember that. I was, a, I was a young kid. I was in high school when Martin Luther King first got started in Montgomery, Alabama. You know, he did, and Montgomery had a rule that only white people could sit at the front of the bus. Do you all remember hearing about that? And, and, and uh, some, some women who were school teachers in the town who were African American said, we're going to protest that. And they got it started after Rosa Parks, who was one of those. She was a seamstress. She was a so She said, I'm not going to obey that rule that only white people can sit at the front. That's just not fair. And you remember Martin Luther King led the, um, got everybody to stop, uh, all the African American people to stop riding the buses, but to walk to work to protest the fact that they, only white people could be at the front of the bus. And it was really, uh, a greatly heroic thing to do. And uh, uh, the first speech he gave to everybody to try to get everybody to agree to protest this rule that whites got to stay at the front, the first speech he gave that night, he said, if we are wrong, the Supreme Court is wrong. Because he thought the Supreme Court had already ruled that you had to treat people fairly on the buses. If we are wrong, the Supreme Court is wrong. If we are wrong, the Constitution is wrong. Because he thought the Constitution was on his side. If we are wrong, God Almighty is wrong. 
let's see, who hasn't asked a quick question? Well, and he took his cases involving Martin Luther King, went to the Supreme Court, and they did some important rulings in Martin Luther King's favor. Uh, they ruled in some cases that he had a right to lead protest in the, in the street. 